Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, Basifran Lab software webinar number 14. Uh, this webinar's title is How to Improve Reservoir Models Using a Process-Based Modeling Approach, so using the Unisys flow. Um, we would like to thank uh, Pemex and BP for providing us with some uh, of their data to, uh, to use in, uh, in our presentations. Um, so let's get uh, started then. Um, I will. Uh, I would like to introduce to you today our speakers. So uh, we have uh, two main speakers, Arnaud Fournillon, who is a, a senior sedimentologist and a reservoir geologist with more than 10 years uh, of professional experience, and Aurélien Barrois, who is a reservoir engineer and exploration geologist, uh, also with more than 10 years experience uh, of professional experience. I will be also uh, partially your speaker. Uh, I am um, a geologist and the technical representative of the UNISUS flow, and I will be uh, introducing you to the software and the methodology, and then giving the floor to uh, Arnaud and Aurélien to go into more detailed uh, case studies. So a little bit about the guidelines of the of the webinar. Uh, all attendees are automatically muted, so uh, we, can, we, we won't be able to hear you, unfortunately, uh, but we can uh, receive your questions uh, if you type them in the questions panel. So feel free at any time of uh, during the webinar to type in your question. We're going to uh, try to answer those questions in the Q&A break, and if, uh, if it becomes, uh, if we receive too many questions, then we're going to start Start answering them right away in the question and answer in the, in the question uh, panel. Uh, also have a look at the polls uh, tab to the right of your screen as well where we will be uh, during the webinar publishing some polls where we'd like on some issues where we would try where we would like to get your opinion and your vote on uh, during uh, and at the end of the webinar. Um, this this webinar will be recorded and uh, the recording will be available on our YouTube channel uh, after the webinar or a few days after the webinar. Um, so what we've prepared for you today on, on the agenda is uh, an introduction uh, to the Unisys flow and its significance for reservoir modeling. Uh, so introduction to forward stratigraphic modeling as well, which is embedded in uh, the Unisys flow. Um, then we're gonna introduce the proposed integration workflows between the Unisys flow and geostatistics. And then um, uh, we will start with some uh, case studies, uh, one in a carbonate, in carbonate reservoir, followed by a Q&A break, then in a classic reservoir, uh, another Q&A break, and finally we are going to uh, finish by an example of uh, the Mises flow contribution to dynamic reservoir uh, modeling and also finish with a Q&A uh, break. So before I start by introducing uh, the Unisys flow and forward stratigraphic modeling, it's important at this uh, stage to uh, to introduce the the problematic that we're trying to address in this webinar, which is the compromise between um, between geological real realism and the conditioning capabilities that one has to make when choosing a methodology to build a, a, a reservoir geomodel. Uh, most of the methodologies that are available are uh, based on a, on a, on a geostatistical uh, on geostatistical algorithms, and these are uh, usually characterized by a, a, a high conditioning capability, um, but a, a relatively low geological uh, realism. Um, the other end, the right side end of this diagram that you see in this slide is process-based methodologies. So, for example, forward stratigraphic uh, modeling, which has uh, a very high uh, geological realism, uh, which, which, which sits on the, on the high geological realism side, but uh, has a relatively low uh, conditioning capability compared to uh, traditional geostatistic, geostatistical uh, methodologies. So uh, what we're tackling in this webinar, what, what we're focusing on is, the, uh, is how to combine, how to get the best of both. The predictive power of a process-based methodology and the geological realism of a process-based methodology and the conditioning capabilities of uh, geostatistics. So to introduce uh, the UNISOS flow and forward stratigraphic modeling in, in a very rapid way, um, forward stratigraphic modeling is a process-based uh, numerical approach that 
reproduces the interactions between the the main uh, mechanisms that that control and drive sedimentation through geological time in a sedimentary basin or part of a sedimentary basin um, in order to reproduce that rock succession that the stratigraphy and sedimentology within those within within this basin so the processes that are incorporated there are uh, subsidence bathymetry eustatic sea level variation climatic cycles sediment input and types of sediment, uh, carbonate production, uh, ecological constraints, erosion, wave energy, uh, and so on. Um, it is designed to quantify the basin's uh, geometry evolution through, uh, through time. And by doing so, we get to, uh, to, 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 to reproduce the three-dimensional sedimentary architecture and uh, its internal uh, also lithological uh, content. So we were able to predict the sedimentary di distribution inside the geobodies that we uh, model. For example, to the, to the right side here, um, we you, you can see that we have uh, those beautiful clinoforms so we are able to model those geometries but also uh, also model that's this baffle zone this mud drape that that drapes this uh, these clinoforms and kind of act as a baffle zone between the reservoir compartment number one and the reservoir compartment number two so these are the kind of geometries that we're able to do in a forest radiophic modeling um, this methodology is uh, calibrated to well and seismic data and is applicable uh, all the way from basin scale to reservoir scale, which is the focus of this uh, of this talk today. Uh, as I, I said earlier, the uh, geostatistical algorithms are more data bound. So as you see on this diagram, they sit on a high on this data bound axis, while forest geographic modeling is more uh, sit on this geology axis, so geological. It, it, it provides a lot of geological realism. And the focus of our talk today, our webinar, is to bring the best of both to provide a hybrid geo model. And the significance now of, 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 such, um, of such an integration, um, well, there's a lot of uh, advantages for having this uh, such an integration. And uh, we listed here if, uh, a few or the most important, but the list uh, can go on. Uh, but mostly it's because we bring processes into this uh, prediction that we're trying to do for the reservoir's heterogeneity and that is very important because similar to how we predicting we predict weather it's important to include the process and to understand the process to predict the weather so it's the same thing for the reservoir and for anything related to subsurface it's not enough to do uh, geostatistics on the data that we have but also important to include the process as well and that allows us to uh, to model complex sedimentary geometries such as as glinoforms, channels, lateral variations. Um, so this, this methodology gives us a lot of predictive power that otherwise we cannot have with the geostatistics. Um, it provides us with a geologically sound interpolation between between data sets and that, it, that the addition it has for modeling brings to geostatistics is that it's able to uh, to model facies that are not penetrated with wells while geostatistics is bound to to the data basically to bound to what you have penetrated in your wells um, the fourth point here is that uh, for stratigraphic modeling honors sequence stratigraphy and GDE concepts and that that's very important because that allows you if, if, if you if you if you are bound to a sequence stratigraphic framework or if you if you honor it then you're able to reproduce um, uh, features such as unconformities, hiatuses, exposure surfaces, uh, surfaces with very low sedimentation rate that can result, for example, in the formation of hard grounds that can be baffle zones for, for permeability in your reservoir. Th these are, are features that forest geographic modeling can provide or can, uh, can, uh, can, can resolve that geostatistics has no way of, of resolving. Then we have the issue of uh, of the scale, so uh, that's also another uh, like point where forest modeling is very versatile because it can go between it can incorporate both 
core and well log scale and seismic scale. So it is it is kind of a, a, a way to bridge the gap between those two uh, types of information with very different uh, lateral and vertical scales. Uh, it allows us to go in sub seismic resolution. So one seismic loop uh and in our data we can we can provide models for 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 that that have more than 50 layers with, with within the unisys flow providing much more information um then we are able also to have information our on on on, on diagenesis and that's also then uh uh, related to 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 the sequence stratigraphic framework that we are able to uh, to honor with FSM, and finally, one very important point is uh, the ability to account for geological uncertainty, and that means that um, especially with when we combine the Unisys flow with Kugar flow, which is our uncertainty management uh, solution, we are able then to account uh, thoroughly for geological uncertainties and transfer that information through probability cubes or uh, VPCs or variograms that are built out of uh, out of thousands of results from our uncertainty analysis to go into to translate that into a reservoir model and 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 de-risk our reservoirs. So um, the proposed workflows, we start here at a point where we already have a Dionysus flow model. We are happy with it. It's calibrated sufficiently to our to our data and we want to go to take it into a reservoir model. Um, there are several ways to do so. Uh, obviously, that's why we're having this, this webinar. Um, but those methodologies or those options can be classified under two uh, big, uh, well, two big options. Option A, which you see here on top is um, the direct input of, of, of the Dionysus flow model. So you use the Dionysus flow uh, grid, so it will be the skeleton of your reservoir model, and then you match it to your to to, to reach 100% calibration with your with your well data by using some uh, geostatistical algorithms. The other option, which is option B, which is uh, extracting constraints then out of a Dionysus model to help uh, guide or to add more geological realism to uh, other ge to, to geostatistical uh, methodologies. So some of these constraints can be uh, VPCs, so vertical proportion curves, trend maps, proportion cubes, uh, and variograms, and so on, or training images as well. Um, so, of course, it is not so easy to choose which methodology to use and what to combine with, with what. That's why we have prepared this, uh, this chart that kind of helps uh, guide towards the right methodology or combination of methodologies, which, as you will notice, it depends on uh, mostly on two things. Uh, one, the type and the amount of data you have. So if you have high well density or high uh, resolution 3D, uh, 3D seismic, uh, and if uh, you are in a carbonate or plastic um, deposition environment, and if your uh, area of your model has, uh, is, is, in a, in a, is in a stationary domain or a non-stationary domain. So all these are things that you can take into, uh, that, that you need to consider while, while trying to decide on which methodology you use. We are uh, going to present to you uh, some of these, of these uh, methodologies that you see in this, uh, in this diagram. Uh, and um, well, there are some that we might not have the time to, to cover, but uh, we will be able to cover most of them, as you're going to see in uh, the slides with uh, Arnaud. So, uh, Arnaud, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So, uh, today we'll present you two, two parts of uh, all these workflows. The first one will be to focus more on carbonate reservoirs and to see how we can uh, uh, use Dionysus with secondary and trend data, and also to see how we can use geostatistical procedure to, to reach 100% uh, of, um, of calibration between wells and uh, forward stratigraphic modeling results. The other part will be more focused on uh, plastics and to see how we can do the same. So, First of all, my uh, example for the carbonate uh, will be based on a Middle Eastern giant carbonate field from lower Cretaceous. And this is a field uh, which encompasses mostly uh, inner ramp lagunal settings, and it is a succession of grain and mud dominated deposits. Uh, I will keep roughly the same legend for all the presentation. Uh, all the uh, warm color 
yellow, uh, red, and orange will be the grain nominated deposits, and all the uh, cold colors, blue and green, uh, are mostly mud dominated deposits. So, first of all, I will begin with all the soft data. So, um, I think this is the most versatile method. Why? Because uh, if you have a poor calibration with your uh, forward stratigraphic model, or uh, if the area is uh, too complicated or too much well to reach a good uh, calibration between your well data and your forward stratigraphic model result, you still can use forward stratigraphic, stratigraphic model to build kind of a 3D Palo environmental constructing cube and uh, which encompass for uh, your understanding of local uh, sequence stratigraphy, lateral uh, facies variation, and can be tied also to uh, Palo environmental paleo environmental maps and also sickness maps and so on. So the idea is to use uh, in this way Dionysus rather to build a full 3D conceptual model and you can extract from that a lot of soft data, which are very useful for the constraint of um, your reservoir model. So uh, first of all, what can be used firstly is the continuous properties. This kind of properties can be uh, vertical proportion curves. It means the proportion of each facies uh, along each layer of your model. You can extract also facies proportion as uh, average per unit, uh, as maps, or directly as 3D cubes, uh, as the FSM produces a lot of uh, continuous property cubes like brain size, chilliness, uh, and in order also to infer some early diagenetic features, you can also extract some exposure time, the types of facies which are uh, exposed, and so on. Also, uh, what can be done, it's to use the FSM results themselves uh, to compute uh, some statistics on them. And it can be very useful for geostatistics, as you know, to define the uh, base of geostatistics, which is the variogram, uh, often with uh, only the well value. It's sometimes uh, very complicated, especially for the horizontal variogram. And so we can compute a variogram directly on the uh, FSM result model and to obtain uh, the anisotropy, the ranges and uh, seal parameters, or even the shape of the variogram. Some example about that. So on the left hand side, you have here the result of your of the variogram computed on the Dionysus uh, results. And on the right hand side, you have the same variogram computed on the well data only. And what we can see, obviously, is that we get something which is much more continuous. As in the FSM result, we compute the variogram on a whole grid rather than a few points. And the impact of uh, such uh, computation is for the setting. If you compare the range and seals that we obtain from the Dionysus, uh, it's much more around maybe uh, 2000 meters and if we use only the wells we get a variogram which is roughly the uh, space in between wells around 5000 meters so uh, almost the double of the variogram uh, size in terms of ranges so it has a huge impact on the resulting geostatistics that we will compute from this variogram Another example is also uh, as the uh, FSM is very continuous, uh, you can uh, compute variogram on a very uh, narrow interval. So for example, here I computed variogram on uh, some grain dominated layers that I grouped together uh, versus some mud dominated layers. And what I can see is that I get a major range, I get a nested variogram with a major range which is around uh, 1,800 meters, and at a smaller scale, I get different variation around 300 meters and 400 meters for uh, the grain versus the mud dominated interval. And if I do the same with the well only, obviously I didn't have enough data to, to compute it. And I got something which is not relevant. So uh, in this case, uh, um, the FSM illustrates the variation, the potential variation of facies through the stratigraphy and the area, and we can compute very uh, precise 
uh, statistics on it. Other things that we can do, uh, it's to uh, extract some proportion cu cubes. These proportion cubes, I explained before, can be directly taken from uh, Dionysus, but also they can be derived from facies uh, as a proportion of facies and so on. And also what we can do, it's reconstruct some uh, derived property cubes by merging several continuous properties. For example, if, I, if, if I've got something like five or six continuous properties from Dionysus, which includes different types of grain size, the exposure time, the shelliness, and so on, I can run a multivariate analysis to group together some uh, properties in order to uh, obtain less cubes that have uh, more per environmental uh, significance. Something also that can be done, which is all very versatile and that can be used especially in faulted grids, because as you know, uh, uh, Dionysus cannot provide faulted grids. So if you want to transfer your Dionysus result within a faulted grid, what you can do, it's rather than working uh, directly from the 3D properties, you can extract some maps per stratigraphic interval, extract the VPC, vertical proportion curve, from Dionysus, combine the two in order to have the 3D proportion curve directly computed into your reservoir grid, which can be then uh, faulted. Also, uh, instead of using average, you can use minimum, maximum, and uh, lots of uh, statistics. So the idea is to find the right proxy to, to have the, the closest information to your uh, facies for a subsequent uh, geostatistical. Uh, simulation. Also, uh, which is interesting, uh, is when you look in uh, the, in a zone uh, which is poorly known, where you have uh, very few wells. Sometimes your wells are concentrated uh, into the same uh, polar environment, and geograph geographically, in the same field, you may have uh, some facies which are not be encountered by your first few wells. So by running uh, FSM uh, simulation, you can have a better understanding of the other potential fascias that can occur around uh, these uh, fuels. And also you can quantitatively assess them. So for example, uh, on this, if we compare the VPC from the wells, we can see that we have the same trend, for example, for the blue lines and the gray lines as in Dionysus because the Dionysus reproduce part of this information, but also we get some fishes, for example, in the first layer here, the uh, light layer blue one, which has not been encountered by the wells, but which may potentially exist laterally to this well. Uh, now I will go uh, more into the detail of using directly the uh, Dionysus results themselves by two ways. The first one will be the multiple point statistics. I will talk a little bit about that just after. And after that, the direct use of the model and just local correction to have a 100% calibration between uh, wells and Dionysus results. Uh, also something that has to be noted, it's uh, this key parameter, which is the discrepancy in between well and Dionysus flow results. Obviously, when you have a high calibration quality, if you reach more than 80% of calibration between your wells and your FSM results, the correction is much more easier than if you have a low uh, calibration between wells and FSM results. So first of all, uh, multiple point geostatistics. So uh, at the contrary of classical tool points geostatistics, it is not based on a variogram, but it is rather based on a training image. Uh, what is a training image? It's an image built by the geologist, which represents uh, um, his understanding of the uh, depositional environment and on the lateral continuity of facies and their uh, relationship together. And based on the uh, well distribution, the algorithm try to reproduce the training images and still accounting for uh, the position of the wells. This is an iterative process. And for example, how it works, the, this is a training image in E. 
it is decomposed on a lot of unique patches and based on the well position the algorithm try to find the best uh, compromise sorry up the sorry uh, <laughs> you don't see my mouth so this is the training image uh, each image has been decomposed in unique patches and based on well position the algorithm try to find which patch fits well with the well and uh, the subsequent data and at the end it reproduces something which uh, which looks like the image uh, that we uh, use as input so uh, this is an example so this is the dinosaur flow results that you have here so it comes from this middle eastern uh, giant field you have in yellow the paxton greenstone in blue a lot of muxton wexton and you can see we get huge patches of mud uh, related together by small channels uh, and which form a complex picture and uh, we use it as training image in terms of result we obtain something which is uh, quite similar we get these huge patches of mudstone and also we get these tiny channels which link together these patches so obviously these two images are different but in terms of lateral continuity uh, and uh, fascist pattern we get which we, we get something which is very similar and also in this case our match with the well is it's around 80 percent but in this case uh, as this is a just statistical procedure we get something which is around 100 percent now, uh, if you are rather confident on your dynamics model and on the calibration what we can do is also use another just statistical procedure which will produce uh, an image which is much closer to the dinosaur flow result but this time with also a 100 percent uh, calibration uh, how it works it's pretty simple so this is for example the dinosaur flow uh, result you can see around these two well passes that uh, there is a small discrepancy between the wells and uh the surrounding fascias that we have for example here we get we get some green and then some yellow yeah some blue and some green also so the match is not perfect so what we have done is to export to decompose this dinosaur flow result into a succession of fascias probability cube and then we use uh, tgs which is a geostatistical algorithm a truncated gaussian simulation to reproduce this dinosaur flow image and try to have a better calibration for example here this blue uh, spot that we have here creates a blue geobodies and now i will show you how it looks like uh, in um, at the scale of the field first in cross section so this is the dinosaur flow result this is the match version and we can see that we create through this geostatistical procedure uh, some new uh, bodies geo bodies but in terms of stratigraphic architecture we stay uh, exactly the same with very continuous uh, greenstone dominated layer interbedded with mudstone dominated layer in uh, green if we compare these dionysos results to uh, a classical geostatistical result only based on uh, wells we can see that we have a huge difference on this case we cannot obtain these very continuous uh, layers that we have in the dinosaur flow model but if we incorporate some soft constraints for example i run a simulation with uh, the wells only plus a vpc from dionysus we can have an announcement of lateral continuity of the bodies even if we cannot reach the quality uh, of this one to reproduce this stratigraphic architecture now if we look at the uh, mps results the multiple point statistics results what we can see is that we reproduce more or less uh, the same architecture as in uh, dionysus now in terms of um, field view what we have so we have the dinosaur flow results we have the uh, version which is matched to the wells we can see the very very small differences only on uh, this part and on this part 
This is a version that you see with the uh, multiple point statistics. So very close image, but different geobodies. And if we look at classical geostatistical method, for example, truncated Gaussian simulation with the wells, wells only, we get something which is uh, less geological looking than the Dionysus flow, obviously. But if we uh, add some secondary information like a vertical proportion curve, we can obtain something which is closer in terms of uh, facies relationship and also in terms of geobody sizes. But with uh, uh, SIS, which is a sequential uh, indicator simulation, we cannot reach something which uh, is looking uh, geologically good. Uh, now, just a few statistics to understand the uh, added value of uh, such processes. So uh, I will present quickly two, uh, uh, two proxies to, in order to, to assess this uh, added value. So this is based on uh, fractal behavior of the uh, geobodies. So I ran uh, volumetric analysis of the geobodies. So each geobodies uh, um, have its own volume, which is calculated. And I compare the forward static graphic model result the TGS without any uh, secondary constraint result, and also the SIS result. And I put also the FSM, uh, which is being matched to the well uh, on this plot. So first of all, what we can see is that between the FSM and its version, which is matched to the well, there is uh, not such a big difference. But if we look at the FSM, TGS, and SIS, we get a loss of the occurrence frequency of the uh, uh, larger bodies, and then it means that we get a loss of organization. Also, what we can see is if we compute um, uh, the, um, I, I forget the name, <laughs> sorry for that. If we compute um, the uh, this type of, um, of rank and to see the trend, we can see that the R square value of the trend uh, is decreasing from the FSM up to GTGS and then SIS. So it means that uh, if this dispersion value of R square are smaller within the FSM, it means that the geobodies are more uh, consistent and more stratigraphically uh, connected. So Another uh, matrix of that is a comparison of the incidence of probability. So this matrix means uh, what is the probability to have a body of a certain side, a size, sorry, of a certain size, comparing SIS, TGS, and FSM. And we can see that uh, due to the uh, algorithm, all distribution have the same shape, but the uh, FSM, at a constant probability value have much more connected uh, geobodies. Larger connected bodies means more connection and means that in terms of uh, history matching uh, for the uh, dynamic simulation, it would be easier to connect because often uh, during the history matching process, generally the uh, models provided by classical geostatistics lacks of this kind of uh, connection. Uh, this is kind of an overview of what we can do at the scale of reservoir using uh, both geostatistics and FSM result and their integration. So I don't know if you have no some uh, some question. I can also look at the uh, question panel to see uh, yeah. if there is Thank something. Thank you, Arno. Uh, well, we do have a few questions, and uh, I'm going to start uh, with the first one, which I think I I will address first. Um, so the first question is how do you cons uh, well the first two questions are more or less having the same answer. So the first one is how do you consider the model based biases in your proposed workflow? The second question is uh, in your workflow any uncertainty uh, been incorporated in the model? Um, so the way we where we could 
Uh, so in the examples you're seeing here, in, in, in this uh, case, we have used one Dionysius model. So we did not do any uncertainty analysis behind behind this uh, Dionysius flow model. But uh, the, the workflow we proposed to, to do that we could we could easily do is to incorporate a Cougar flow step between the Dionysus flow and the, the geostat, where instead of, pro, of producing then your uh, your VPCs from one uh, Dionysus model, you produce it from thousands of results, uh, or your trend maps, for example, you pr can produce them from thousands of results that come from uh, the response surface, which is uh, produced in Cougar flow uh, to, to assess, well, to account for the uncertainty. Um, so there is a step uh, that, that, that could be added in between to account for uncertainty. We do not show it much in this uh, in this webinar. We will briefly uh, mention it at the very end only. But if you're interested in uh, more in this, feel free to contact us and we can provide you some more information about Cougar Flow and how to incorporate it. Um, now the next uh, question is... So, I sorry, think, uh, Samir, yes. if, if I can just add something. Yeah, please. Uh, also, uh, because we are using here two types of uh, simulation, a process-based followed by a geostatistical simulation, it's each type of simulation got its own uncertainty. So we can run effectively a Cougar flow to have an uncertainty analysis on the FSM results, but also we can use uh, classical uncertainty approaches uh, of geostatistics, for example, uh, using different types of uh, seed for the geostatistical simulation, using uh, different range or types of variograms, different range or types of proportion. We can manage uh, and to, to use classical approaches in geostatistics to, to see all these uncertainties. Because here we are uh, two types of uncertainty, one linked to the Dionysus model and one another linked to the geostatistical procedure. All right, thank you, Arno. So the next question here is, uh, how can you trust a VPC or a facies proportion map computed from FSM if FSM does not match the well data? What about combining the VPC from, for, from FSM with a VPC from the actual wells using some form of weight, weighing based on the correlation between FSM and well data? Yeah, actually, uh, it's a very good point because uh, it depends on each uh, on each cases. In the cases where we you can rely, you have both a good calibration between your well and your FSM. You can use directly the, uh, uh, the VPC from the FSM because you know that in the area where you have the wells, you are calibrated, and you use the VPC to have the constraint outside of um, the well area. But also, obviously, if we have a low calibration, you can use an hybrid in between VPC at the well or VPC from the uh, FSM. So this is really uh, user-driven. It depends on your understanding of uh, the FSM results, the quality that you give to this FSM result, and also on your understanding of the field that you have. Because uh, outside of the wells themselves, you get also the seismic, you get also your your geological, your local geological understanding, and so on. So the idea is not to to follow this workflow step by step. It's rather to to have a collection of tools and cho choosing the right tool to to do the best thing for your for your field development. I... Thank you, Arnaud. Uh, there's one more question, but I think you already answered it. Uh, so, uh, Sebastian asks, uh, before you try to use FSM as a probability cube in Geostat to match the well data, um, don't you want to try to optimize the initial correlation between the well data and FSM by squeezing, expanding the FSM model around the well data? Yeah, also, uh, th that's a good point. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's all matter of the time that you get and the results that you want and also the data that you have. So if you have a lot of, of effort to, to put on the tuning of the FSM, you can obviously do the right uh, thing to, to match a perfect calibration. But uh, it's rather time consuming because uh, obtaining something which account for sequence stratigraphy and uh, global understanding of your geology uh, is it's rather quick on, on FSM usually. Uh, within a week or two, you can have something which is reliable at the, at the, at the scale, uh, uh, at the bigger local scale, let's say. Not regional one, but bigger local scale. But if you want to have a precise bed by bed match, uh, it's very time consuming. 
So the idea here, it's rather to use a quick method to can synthesize all your understanding of the stratigraphy in local geology in a 3D uh, continuous uh, cube, a 3D continuous model, which is the FSM. Great. Because, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, so the idea is that yeah, FSM can 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 be uh, done quickly and provide still some some uh, some input, some insights into geostatistics, into geomodeling. It can also then, of course, if we have more time, you can spend more time into optimizing the model, the FSM model, uh, as much as possible, and then you'll get, of course, much more details out of it. But then it's always a balance between how much time you want to spend and and how much details you want to have. Um, so I think we're done with the first uh, Q and A session. There's a few more questions that just came now, but I think for time constraints, we're going to go on to the next uh, point, and then I'll try to answer the questions in the in the in the chat and the question. Okay. So oh, no, uh you can go on. <laughs> yeah, I try to to be it quick in order to to see all the presentation. <laughs> So now uh, I will present you uh, Clastic Reservoir. Uh, this is the case which is receiving courtesy uh, provided by uh, uh, BP for the input data. And now I will show you how we can use uh, FSM results for Clastics. Because at the difference of carbonate, uh, usually in Clastics fields, uh, we can be uh, retackled by the unstationary of the area because in classics we get a sedimentary flux uh, rather than local production compared to carbonate and then we have to understand this kind of uh, source to sink uh, processes so here in this case uh, we are studying uh, river delta and uh, in order to constrain this global uh, direction of the sediment flux what we have done is we have uh, use a nested approach. We have first constructed a very big regional block, uh, which is um, several hundreds of kilometers by several hundreds kilometers. Then within this block, we have refined uh, the cell size and constructed a local block, which is 80 by 70 kilometers uh, long and width. And also we have constructed this local block in order just to uh, study a narrow area which is within this block. So the ultimate reservoir model will be another block which is within this one. So here the idea is really to capture uh, the understanding, uh, the regional understanding of the sediment uh, flow. Also something that we have done, uh, it's an option that exists uh, in dinosaur flow, is we have done a downscaling in order to have this uh, 500 meter uh, scale, uh, sorry, uh, cells uh, from the uh, local grid to a much more, uh, let's say, a reservoir scale grid uh, of 50 meters. So here, uh, I put again this uh, decision tree, this flow chart. So we are rather in plastics and we are not in stationary domain. So uh, one possibility is to use, I will show you some example of that, some fascias from continuous log, but also we can use uh, other method using um, um, trend from Dionysus. So three possibilities this time. The first one, as I mentioned, is to use directly a continuous approach. The idea here, for example, is to use the shadiness cube from Dionysus and uh, correct uh, this cube with the FS as you freeze the V-shale from the wells and then transform this V-shale into fishes. Sometimes it does not work because you have some diagenesis. So another possibility is to use directly a discrete approach. I will show you a little bit about that. And also this time again to use a multiple point geostatistic uh, approach. So first of all, the uh, use of continuous properties. Uh, this one is rather simple. The idea uh, it's to take the uh, shale cube from Dionysus remove the part where we get the wells and run a classical uh, geostatistical procedure. In this case, I use a Gaussian random function to uh, simulate the uh, V-shale within the reservoir grid using Dinosaur's flow uh, shaliness as a trend. And uh, if we have some uh, 
a sharp transition at the border between the wells and the grid, we can use a little bit of smoothing to, to, to avoid this uh, sharpness. So uh, in terms of result, if we compare the raw dynasis and uh, the result, we get something which is very uh, consistent also in terms of uh, maps. Another procedure which is uh, more complex because uh, the issue here is um, in plastics, we, we have a sharp transition in between fascias that does not exist generally in carbonate. So we cannot use so much of uh, Gaussian um, geostatistical procedure. Uh, so sometimes, uh, often, we uh, it's difficult to use the right algorithm. So in this case, what we have done is we use several properties cube from Dionysus. In this case, we use three uh, grain size of sand and the shell cube, and we run a multivariate analysis using neural network and uh, PCA in order to reconstruct from this cube uh, three uh, continu uh, three continuous uh, facies, so no, not three continuous, but three subsequent facies, which are shale, silt, and sand, uh, and uh, with no transition be with transition between shale to silt and silt to sand, and no transition between shale and sand. So it means by using this ranking facies, we can use a uh, Gaussian procedure. So it will provide a more uh, geostatistical, uh, more uh, statistically robust results. So from this cube of reconstruct facies from Dionysus, we extract these three probability cubes with for sand, silt, and shale, and rerun uh, TGS, so a targeted Gaussian simulation, using these three probability cubes as trend. And we obtain something which is very similar, but this time with 100% of match between the wells. You know, here, compared to the previous image um, of the uh, V shale, you can see that the scale is not really the same, but in dark green, you get this shale, in light green, the silt, and in orange, the uh, sands. And in between the two, we can see that we get a pretty good match between the Dionysus and this time the version which is 100% match uh, to the wells. Another example of how we can use Dionysus is use Dionysus only as uh, soft trends. For example, if I produce a multiple point geostatistic simulation from Dionysus as training image or from an analog, which is in this case uh, River Delta, which is in Korea. I obtain with the same well distribution a kind of very different result, but and which are also not consistent with our understanding of the sediment flux direction. But if I use some trends from Dionysus in order to constrain this flux, what I obtain is something uh, which is uh, quite reliable in terms of. Uh, source uh, to basin of platform to basin transition. Another example, if I use also classical geostatistics using, for example, truncated Gaussian simulation or sequential indicator simulation, using the trend, so still with the same well data, I obtain something which is quite reliable, especially for uh, the Gaussian version, because even in this case, the SIS provides not so good uh, results. It is very patchy. So, in order to uh, to better constrain all types of uh, geostatistics, the idea here, because we have this gradient between delta plane, front, and basin, to use Dionysus in this case only as a secondary data uh, trend to provide something which is reliable. Just to finish quickly, uh, so uh, a question that was asked and uh, which is asked <laughs> each time, how we assess the uncertainty. So uh, our software uh, answer here is to use the software that we get, which is called WeAflow, which is an uncertainty software analysis. So the idea is for each parameter of the forward stratigraphic model, uh, we can have a kind of draw of 
properties within a statistical distribution, which is converted into a response surface model. And for each point of this surface uh, modeling result, uh, it represents a forward stratigraphic model result. So we can have thousands of forward stratigraphic model result and then compute probability from that. So uh, in this case, this is an example for carbonate. So it works for both carbonate and plastics, obviously. Uh, and for example, we can have here the probabilities of the mudstone presence taking in account some uncertainty or, for example, the uh, uh, subsidence or uh, carbonate production or plastic influx inside this carbonate model and so on. And this can be done for each type of carbonate uh, that we get. At the end, these results, as this is directly proportion cubes, can be used directly as uh, soft data, trend data for the geostatistics. So I don't know if you have uh, more questions, but roughly here, the idea of all the tools that I have presented, uh, it's to show the versatility of the use of the forward scientific model result. It can be used directly and uh, with local correction, or it can be used as a soft data uh, trend. And obviously uh, it has to be uh, tackled and compared for each case that we face in terms of data distribution and stationarity of the model. So thank you for your attention. And now yeah. I will just answer a few next questions. Yeah, thank you, Arno. Uh, we have a few questions. And I think for the time, I'm going to just uh, select one of them. Uh, so the question is, do you use machine learning with this uh, modeling? Um, so I think we we can split the maybe the the answer here. I know uh, I'll, I'll answer the the Cougar part mm -hmm. of, of of this. Yeah. Uh, so with with the, the Cougar flow approach is sort of uh, machine learning because when we construct a response surface, the idea is we we run a small number of simulations, then we construct a response surface which will uh, mimic it will learn the behavior of the calculator from those few simulations, then we will start interrogating that response surface to get results. So it's, it is a sort of machine learning that we use with, uh, with Kugar uh, flow. And yeah, and concerning the geostatistical procedure, I will do just a quick, quick answer. So it is not really machine learning. We, we can call it machine learning because uh, this is a classical neural network uh, workflow, which involves so training first uh, the neural network with a limited uh, amount of data points, and then uh, propagated the uh, the statistical load that you get at the scale of uh, the full simulation. But in this case, it's rather data mining rather than uh, re really uh, machine learning with uh, uh, deep learning and this kind of very complex and very big data analysis. So it's something which is smaller scale. All right. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we are ready to move to, uh, to Aurelien. So Aurelien, the floor is yours. And now we're gonna see uh, an application with some uh, uh, well, dynamic reservoir modeling. So, uh, Aurelien. Yes. I will share my screen. Okay, so I will, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I will uh, speak about the contribution of Dionysus flow to dynamic reservoir modeling. Okay, uh, this model uh, was provided by uh, Pemex. So we Thanks, Pemex, for uh, allowing uh, us to use uh, its data and to uh, show the results. So, in uh, in this uh, reservoir model, which was in a carbonate context, we have two wells with uh, some uh, data to um, uh, to honor as gas rates on wellhead or bottomhead pressure. So, we have Firstly, a classic static model with which uh, results with uh, a first run in dynamic uh, in dynamic context is a blue answer for the well A, and uh, also the blue uh, curve for the well B. So we we can see 
that just at the beginning there is no no match between the gas rates and the wallet pressure or the bottom head pressure so some classic uh, work about uh, calibration has been made at uh, with uh, two well models so one uh, some two model was extracted from the static model around well a and well b and they were they were calibrated using a permeability multiplier which are at, at the end quite different between the well a and the well b so there is no clear console, consolidation between the, the the two set of parameters to realize the calibration so at this point um sorry the dinosaur's flow model was initiated to um represent the um, the, the geology of uh, this reservoir and the area and uh, uh, first uh, in fact what is highlighted uh, from the, the Daniels flow model is there is uh, some um, fascias which were exposed on the Daniels flow allow us to um, to highlight these uh, fascias which uh, were exposed and um, so a first announcement was made on the on the on the, on the model of the reservoir model and it's give us on, on this graph for well a and well b the blue line so the blue uh, the uh, first simulation so we see that still the calibration is not good but there is maybe a first better answer for from the the solicitation but so we, uh, but having this uh, knowledge from the Dunyos flow model, which uh, we begin to make a more geologically uh, cal geological calibration around the wells. So again, we extracted two uh, models around the wells for the well A and well B, and we begin to um, to proceed to calibration again, working on the permeability and working also on the cells which were perforated by the the well. And so from where the, the, the production came. And in fact, at uh, a final result, we again obtained two set of parameters for well A and well B, which were quite different because on one hand, we, we need a permeability multiplier of five and in another, and the other hand of a permeability multiplier by 30. But we this time, we were focused on the fascia, we were focused on cells with certain fascias which were uh, highlighted by dangerous dangerous formula so in this case we increase the permeability of grainstone runstone bonestone in both cases because we know that it was um, the reservoir uh, it was the, the reservoir cells and where the, the, the oil will flow so knowing that so knowing that we have two wells with two set of parameters and we increase our screening about uh, the, um, the model and uh, we, we know also that the perforated uh, cells in the well a where was only exposed uh, area uh, or exposed fascias uh, and in the well b it was unexposed fascias so it was uh clarify clarifying the fact that on a, a well we have just a multiplier by five on on the other well a multiplier by 30. so knowing this we make some consolidation because we have we have uh, independently calibrated two well so we are, we are back to the big model and we incorporate the, the calibration parameters by defining some uh, multiplier for the non-exposed brainstone redstone bonestone some multiplier for the exposed or gen gen genetically altered grainstone redstone bonestone and also we improve in the case of waxstone paxton some uh, multiplier in on the xy permeability and in this figure we uh, we see that the, the results well, uh, as well, because at the, in the in our previous um, 
slide, we were just focusing on wells which are independently, um, uh, which behavior was independent because it was two separated models. And no, the, uh, the well are part of the same model, so they can have some uh, interacts between, uh, between them through the model. And we see that clearly with uh, the consolidation of our calibration parameters, we uh, honor with uh, a, 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 good, um, uh, a good ability the gas rate for well A and well B, and also the well head pressure uh, evolution, the bottom head pressure evolution. And so in, in this case, the use of the Linus flow comes after uh, it was used, in fact, on uh, uh, taking into account the texture and the exposure time, which are some output from uh, Genesis flow, in order to constrain the reservoir model, but, uh, but also to help us to think about how to, to uh, match our calibration with a more uh, geological process uh with a more geological process uh, orientation when where you are realizing some reservoir engineering so in fact here we as uh, the the figures the, the on the your right shows you show us we use Genesis flow texture plus the Genesis flow genetic overprint to expose the time to uh uh, to uh, generate a new geological realistic permeability, which will help us to um, honor the, the, the data that we have at uh, at well. But uh, on the other hand, uh, the dangerous flow uh, input can be um, used earlier in the process if you use it uh, when, where you are you are realizing the petrophysical uh, studies in order to um, to from the beginning, generate uh, porosity uh, blocks, which are which use as trends the uh, fascias from Genesis flow. In order, after when you will uh, generate your permeability with a KFE um, low, to have a permeability low which honors the porosity, which are honoring the, the um, clearly the, the Genesis flow texture. And this is uh, the end of my year. Yes, so thank you, Aurelien. I think we've reached the, the last uh, Q&A session. Um, so here we have, a, we have seen a, a really nice example of how, uh, well, in this case, was a reservoir model that was where, where history matching was achieved without, without the input of the Unisys flow, however, with some unrealistic, uh, ungeological assumptions for permeabilities uh, in this reservoir, and when when we when we brought in Dionysus to 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 build that reservoir model with, then we saw that the assumptions that we made were very uh, well. We were able to do geological assumptions of permeabilities based on the exposure time, so diagenetic overprint, and uh, the lithologies, so the textures from Dionysus flow. So so our uh, our history match then or reservoir model that provided a good history match was uh, much more geological than one that was based on trial and error. And in this case, history matching was possible with both uh, cases, but you could imagine cases where uh, you really you're not able to, to 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 achieve a good history match without incorporating detailed uh, features from a Dionysus flow model, for example, with the carstifications, with the, with the textures, and a lot of different uh, parameters or input that can come from Dionysus flow. Um, I think we have one question here from uh, for for, uh, for Aurelien. And that's uh, initial permeability was textural based. Then permeability multiplier was applied independent of texture. Uh, in fact, the, we, uh, uh, the model was provided us with the porosity already computed. So it was not uh, the, in, in, the permeability comes from a key low from the porosity. And there was based on the petrophysic uh, work of the company. So it was not textural based on the Dianosos flow uh, model. Okay. Um, 
So I think we're reaching uh, towards the end, but before we uh, we finalize this, uh, I would like to remind you to go to the polls uh, tab and answer our uh, the polls that we have published. So uh, we uh, we get to also learn from you and from your experience uh, with this webinar and uh, hopefully get uh, provide you with even better uh, webinars in the future. Um, so I think we're only nine minutes past uh, <laughs> past uh, the the time dedicated for this webinar. We would like to uh, thank you all for your participation, and uh, we will send you uh, the link for our YouTube channel and the video once we post it as soon as we uh, as we finalize the uh, the montage. And uh, well, thank you all. And hopefully we'll see you soon in other webinars. Bye.